Welcome back. 22 minutes after 7 o'clock. Jury selection underway, of course, in the uh, murder trial of the man accused of killing uh, the uh, Navy or American sniper Chris Kyle and Chad Littlefield. Retired State District Court Judge Mike Snipes with us. Presided over the uh, Kaufman County DA murders. Another case where you had a fairly small jury pool to select from, a, a, a smaller county, and a very high-profile case. Is it tough to find a good jury down in Erath County, do you think? Well, it would be if, if the state was seeking the death penalty in this case, but they're not. This is what is called a mini-cap, meaning it's a capital murder case, but it's not eligible for death. The really difficult questions come up uh, in a death penalty case when you're asking the veneerman if they can, in a particular case, sentence someone to death, right. uh, but not always. Right, veneerman being the potential jurors. they got 800 of them down there. Your feeling is they're going to find a jury with little little trouble down there. That is my feeling. I, I presided over several minicap cases myself and in fact our, our usual veneer for that is 75. Yeah. So. Um, the jury members when you're picked for a murder trial you take that pretty seriously. Somebody who's going to show up and commit their time uh, and their attention to a murder trial they're pretty serious about it. They are and, and a lot of times they come up for jury service they don't realize what they're getting into and then it becomes very painfully uh, uh, obvious to them uh, pretty early on uh, the nature and the gravity of the offense. Now in this particular case there's this movie, the number one movie in the country right now, American Sniper, and, and the danger with a jury like this is that some people may want to get on it so they can convict the guy who killed Chris Kyle. That is a danger and you have to be acutely aware of that. The test for whether a, a juror can sit as a juror in a case like this is not whether they've heard about the case, not whether they've seen the movie, not whether other people have talked about it, but can they put that out of their minds and, and render a fair and impartial verdict in the case based on the evidence. And, and what you have to do is make it clear to them that in this country, the way it works, you have to hold the prosecutor's feet to the fire to prove it. Yes beyond a reasonable doubt. Which is a pretty high bar. It is the highest bar we have. Right. Uh, do you have a problem in a high profile case like this, do you think, uh, and you did in Kaufman County, with people getting on Facebook and just, I mean, you, you give them this stern lecture and point the finger at them and say, do not get on the media, do not talk about this, this is off limits, don't discuss it with your spouse or anybody else, and they're on Facebook the next day. They, they certainly were in a Coppin County case, and so uh, whereas uh, initially I uh, had more of a, the kindly old judge demeanor with them, I had to get a little bit more stern mm -hmm. later on in the case about do not look at the media, because it, there's a huge temptation to do exactly that. That's right, and, and when they get in the jury room to do the same thing, to do a bit of research, because there are some things they won't hear during the course of the trial, and they might start researching it with their smartphones. They might, but I had every confidence in the world in the Coppin County case that those jurors were being extremely good citizens, extremely careful about not doing that. And, and like I said, since this is not a death penalty case, it's, it's still a very, very serious right. case, obviously. It shouldn't be quite the, the problem that we had. In it, it will be complicated, though, because apparently there's going to be an insanity defense. What, what is the legal bar in Texas, different in every state, for, for proving uh, to a jury that this person was insane and therefore not responsible for his actions? Well, to put it in layman's terms, it's, it's basically this. Uh, as my friend Toby Shook uh, talked to me about the other day, it's basically, did you know what you were doing? at the time of the offense. It's not whether you had post-traumatic stress disorder or had other mental issues. Did you realize what you were doing, the consequences of your act at the time that it took place? And did you know that what you were doing was wrong? Right. Yeah. Uh, so I even, even that, I mean, clearly this was a disturbed individual, may or may not have had post-traumatic stress. That is not an excuse. That doesn't get you off the hook in Texas. Well, that, that can go to a, a mitigation or extenuating right. phase of the case. But the thing about that is if you're convicted of capital murder in a minicap case, then it's a life without parole regardless. Right. So. No question. Judge, thanks very much. Appreciate Thank the you. insight. Wishing the best of luck down there. Find a good jury and uh, certainly hope they will.